Hey, what's going on, good people? Welcome to Rush Can Fly. So, if you remember, I landed at St. Mary's Municipal Airport, um, and I definitely felt so accomplished. I got flight following. Um, the last, you know, um, center I was handed off to was Cleveland Center, which was like real crazy. Um, after I landed, um, as you can see, St. Mary's FBO is in the background. Um, I had to get fuel and um, I had to go <laughs> to the little boy's room. And there's a restaurant right in that FBO. So I want to go back. Um, it's like right on the other side, there's like a pretty cool restaurant that I did end up going in before, um, I, you know, after I, you know, went to the bathroom and then came back to the pump. So now it is time to fly back to Doylestown and goodbye for now, St. Mary's. So we are at St. Mary's. I got to make my way back to Doylestown. Another hour and 45 minute flight. All right, so let's get my ATIS here. St. Mary's Municipal Airport. Automated weather observation. Two, zero, four, five, Zulu. Weather, wind, two, one, zero, at, five. Visibility, one, zero, seven, thousand, five, hundred. Scattered temperature, one, niner, Celsius. Two point, five, altimeter, two, niner, niner, one. I'm going to run with two, eight. And get on out of here. All right, so my flaps are up. Let's just trim for takeoff now. Seat belts, flaps are up. Benefrost, avionics is on. I got my ATIS AWOS altimeter. Transponder is 1200. Radio test. Radio test is transmitting. Brake test. I always want to make sure I check my brakes because if your brakes don't work when you go on the ground, no stopping. Brakes are good. All right, let's taxi on out. All right, so we're going to get on out of here. Now, what's interesting is like we got a back taxi. For all my non-pilot friends who may be watching, back taxiing is when you're actually on the runway taxiing back to the start of the runway for takeoff. St. Mary's traffic, Cessna 94006. Uh, back taxi, runway 28, St. Mary's. I don't hear anybody calling. I don't see anybody. I will say that I am, I don't like back taxing because you're on an active runway where people are landing and taking off. So it's always a little spooky if you ask me. Oh yeah, so I'm doing a little back taxi. We're going to go down here to the end of uh, 2-8. Get on out of here. Yeah, it's always weird to do this back taxi stuff. <laughs> like... I don't like being on the runway like this. I want to be off or flying or off. Of course, I've made my call to St. Mary's Municipal Traffic and I have made sure that no one was coming on final and no one was about to take off, but it's still always such a weird thing to be on the active runway. All right, cool. St. Mary's Traffic, that's a 94006, clear of runway 28, St. Mary's. Okay, so let's make sure one time. So our flaps are all the way up. <laughs> the mixture is full rich. Carb heat is off. Trim is set for takeoff. Fuel tank is on. Primer is in and locked. All right, so we are going to be headed out to the southeast. St. Mary's traffic, Cessna 94006, departing runway 28, we're going to be going out to the southeast, St. Mary's. All right. I don't hear anybody coming. I don't see anybody on final. I'm going to go all the way to the end here. This is my first time taking off at this airfield, and I didn't know what was going to be at the end. It's kind of hilly, a little mountainous, some, you know, some ridges. Thought I'm gonna use all the runway, so back taxied all the way to the end. Pictures in, flaps are up. Stem is set for takeoff. Fuel tanks are on. This back taxi and stuff is always so strange. 
Okay, I see. Two, eight. Two, eight. All right. Heels to the floor, full power. Engine instruments are in the green. Oil temp, oil pressure, suction all look good. Air speed is alive. And he can rotate. And I was a little right of center line there. I was getting a little bit of a crosswind push. Um, but yeah, um, and <laughs> I think I was thinking about the fact that after I take off, it's an hour and 45 minute flight. So yeah, <laughs> but I was excited. Going up to five, five. St. Mary's traffic, Cessna 94006. Right crosswind turn out to the southeast. Last call, St. Mary's. And I can't wait until I fly back out to St. Mary's. I mean, such a cool little airport, a nice beefy flight. Um, I think I was a little traumatized, so I didn't enjoy it as much, but yeah, definitely beautiful. Can't wait to go back. I know I want to give myself some some time to climb. All right, climb checklist. So I got my mixture I wanted, throttle where I want it, taxi landing light coming off. All right, so climbing on up to 5.5. Five. So I'm sure at some point these cameras are gonna die um, cause they've been running pretty good. I did manage to uh, charge them a little bit for a minute, but uh, so I got some work to do. About an hour and 45 minute flight, putting me at Doylestown estimated at uh, seven o'clock. So about two hours of flying. And uh, <laughs> I did get fuel. I didn't show that. Um, that was a comedy routine in and of itself. I couldn't figure out how to get it started. Then my clock card declined. Laps are up. Mixture's full rich. Oil temp, oil pressure look good. Glad to be going up another thousand feet, I tell you that much. Just flying over all of this stuff. All of this stuff, there's, it's like forest. So, another thousand feet will be great. The other thing I didn't get a chance to film is <laughs> I went to the office, I had to go to the little boys room and um, the office was closed. So just as I was getting ready to go up, there's a restaurant up there. <laughs> Wait, I tell that restaurant story. But anyway, so I was getting ready to go to the bathroom and these wonderful people pulled up and uh, opened up the office for me so I could go to the bathroom. But there was a restaurant. <laughs> So I go upstairs, so the office is down part of the building, so the restaurant is up. And um, <laughs> I go in the restaurant, and remember that, what is that, Sesame Street? One of these things is not like the other. And I go in there, and I don't know what movie it was, but the movie goes in, and everybody, like, the music stops, and everybody turns. Yeah, it was one of those. <laughs> but it was all good. I mean, I didn't feel necessarily any hostility or anything. It was definitely like, oh, hey. <laughs> it's like, oh, hey. Um, so it was definitely interesting. Cruise checklist, power, mixture, and instruments. So oil temp, oil pressure, all in the green, suction is in the green. So yeah, so I was having some issues with the fuel pump and trying to remember, and I so remember that last video where I went for a fuel run? I was, was waiting for this like loud pump sound. It was none of that. So I hit the button and uh, it was just ready to pump. And so, so yeah, so I pumped my own fuel for the first time. <laughs> Oh, so, so crazy, man. Such a crazy thing. The longest flight, so, I mean, Cleveland approach. I mean, that's crazy. So, I almost, pretty much for all intents and purposes, I think that flight would have put me, if I would have been going, I'll have to look at it and see, but instead of going, because when I came from Doylestown, I flew northwest. So if I just had gone straight west, I think I would have been ready for Allegheny County. 
and I am so grateful that it is smoother up here. All right, everything is looking good on my heading and uh, good on my altitude. I will say that, like I, you know, like I was saying on the way to Penn Valley, you now this that flight is definitely better suited for a 172 or 182 or so. So it looks like I actually flew out of Pennsylvania. I'm going to have to look at this, but because I did, I remember seeing here in New York approach. So I wonder if this is if St. Mary's is in New York. I don't know. That, I'm going to have to look at that. But I mean, it is definitely crazy that um, that I was here in Cleveland, Cleveland Center was when I was having a fight following on the way here. And I have to admit, as you can see, I did not elect to have flight following on the way back. I was just worried about being a little too tired, you know, dialing in frequencies and making a lot of mistakes. So I just knew that it was just going to be easier to fly back, not having flight following. But every flight now, I'm going to have flight following. But yeah, I mean, then I heard Pittsburgh. So I know that... Um, when I looked at four flight, I saw that I could see Pittsburgh International Airport, but I can't, I couldn't really, I didn't want to be paying attention to where I was, but, um, yeah, it was, it was weird, like, yeah. Stand by traffic, four uniform, uniform, turning down, went to one south Penn Valley. So I'm going to stay on this frequency, so apparently Penn Valley is on this frequency as well as St. Mary, so I'll stay on this frequency for a little bit just so I can kind of hear, you know, what's going on there. So to all my uh, student pilots out there, or low time pilots like me, flying over mountains right, traffic, does make a difference. When I'm flying over this stuff here, I definitely feel a lot more wind movement, but I will say that at 5.5, I'm feeling it less than I was when I was on my way to St. Mary's headed west at 4.5. That was, uh, that was sporty. <laughs> As one of my mentors would say, it's sporty. I got some other words that I would use for it, but not in polite company. And plus, I don't want any of my Room 11 brothers to get on me. <laughs> It's like, come on, Mr. Enon Tabernacle, Baptist Church, brother. In that cockpit, using some pretty colorful language. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Now, this is definitely pretty, just flying over these mountains. The rivers going through the mountains. Oh! Ugh. It's almost like you get a wind thing, and you're in this, like, different wind. And it starts pushing you, and you can feel from the back because the plane is doing like this type of thing. So this is one of my challenge flights that I have been wanting to do for quite some time. And it's just ironic that first time I was in Little Sammy, this 152, 006, and um, got to come full circle. Back in Little Sammy, 006, and uh, actually made it to St. Mary's. So it's been interesting to go full circle and um, actually get a chance to accomplish this flight. So this is definitely the furthest I've flown and the longest I've flown. So I think all total, all told, I might be flying like four hours, which is going to be longer than I've ever flown before. So you can see out there, starting to see a little bit more civilization. So literally these mountains from like Penn Valley to St. Mary's, it's just like, nada. All right, 120. So I keep saying 120 because I'm looking at my heading. So rather than like chasing all this stuff, just fly the heading. I'm chasing this needle, chasing that, chasing this, chasing that. Rather than doing all that chasing, just fly the airplane, fly the heading. You know? And look out here, keep that nose right there. All right, 125 nautical miles to go, another hour and 25 minutes. So 
I will say that um, I don't think you're going to see my landing in Doylestown. <laughs> I don't think these cameras are going to last that long. Um, but certainly, I'm glad that you guys were able to come on this flight with me. And that we all were able to get to St. Mary's. And we were able to get in St. Mary's. And little Sammy, the 152. I will say that this plane is so fun to fly. It's really easy. There's not a lot to it, you know, in terms of the controls and things of that nature. And it just flies so easy. But I will say that um, flying over the mountains and, you know, when it is after flying 172s all that time, all those months, and getting back in this, I definitely feel the lightness. Damn me a little light in the butt. <laughs> you get pushed around a little easy there, Brother Sammy. I mean, I know, you know. It is what it is, but you're a little light in the keister, brother. <laughs> but I think once I get past, so see these mountains right here, and I'm flying that little V, see that little tiny cut? Once I get through there, I think my mountain flying is done. And I won't be too unhappy about that. Although I will say, man, going into St. Mary's, you saw me. I mean, it was like, oh, 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 and then, you know, these frequencies and stuff. Now, I hate to confess this, but I always try to be transparent. So, yes, I wanted to get flight following back, but I couldn't find on the sectional what was the approach um, or clearance or whatever frequency I should have dialed in. And so I've chickened out. Um, I wanted to do flight following there and back, especially going over those mountains. And I definitely, that would have been a lot more responsible. Although, I'm not required, but it definitely would have been better. Like, that would have been a better aeronautical decision. But I couldn't find it. I didn't know where I should be looking on this. So, this, so one of the things I do once I finish flying, I always debrief my flight. Uh, so before I even start doing anything else with the footage you know in terms of putting it on YouTube and whatnot I watched some of the things that happened and I debriefed the flight and you know this part of the footage will remind me yeah dude you know you should have had flight following that would have been a better decision and the only reason why you didn't is because you didn't have the frequency which you know kind of in the scheme of things wasn't wasn't really cool but I mean no harm no foul but it's just nice to have another pair of eyes especially over all of those mountains this traffic wasn't the issue but you know if I have an emergency I'm in those mountains heaven forbid I end up in the trees you know, I can declare my mayday with them and they can know exactly where I am because they've been following me because I've been on their scope and so part of my pre-flight planning when I was there should have been, okay, so I knew to call Allentown approach out of Doylestown, but who should I have contacted for VFR flight following on the way back? And even now when I look, I'm not exactly sure, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of time looking down because I really want to spend my time looking out. And so, even now, to figure out, I mean, eventually I'll get to Reading, and I'll be able to call Reading Approach. But yeah, that's something that I definitely should have should have done. That was that should have been part of my cross-country planning, so, note to self. Sky Manor traffic, Cherokee is turning final, runway 25, Sky Manor. I know it's a lot of people fly out of Sky Manor. I'm going to land there one day just to just to see what that place is like. But every time I fly, there is somebody flying into or out of Sky Manor. And I don't think it's too far away. Uh, Doylestown traffic, Archer 60 Juliet, turning left downwind, runway 23, Doylestown. All right, Doylestown. Everybody's 23. So I'm gonna do 
Across midfield for a left downwind for runway two three. So this has been this has been great. I'm going to sleep like a baby. I can tell you that much. Um, it's amazing how much flying takes out of you. I mean, you just kind of like you know you got to settle in and you know be focused, but. But it is nice, though. So thankful that the Lord saw fit that I have the time and the wherewithal to do it. And as I predicted, the cameras died on me. And as you can see, I'm still talking, but <laughs> there's no sound. Um, but, you know, this video has gone on long enough. But as you can see um, and as you can hear, um, obviously, I eventually landed at Doylestown and all was well. And I got to tell you, this was definitely such an amazing flight. Um, I definitely felt so blessed to be able to um, complete this adventure. So with that, I'm going to sign off. I thank you for watching this video. I thank you for supporting me on this journey. I thank you for the prayers and the comments. They all mean a lot to me. All right, so with that, Russ Kid, Russ Can Fly, I'm out. Until next time, peace.